Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. We are from Group C and we are going to present our research paper on cultivating the use of public transport to strive sustainable cities. This topic is rela related to the 11 goal of SDG, which is sustainable cities and community, where one of the target is to provide public transport that is easy to access, affordable, and sustainable. You see, invention of motorized vehicle is one of the humanity's greatest achievements in, simplify in simplifying daily activities. In the 90s, having a car is a sign of one richness, but currently, rather than showing off one asset, it is more like a need to easily travel in the short term. Hence, the government has produced several public transport to help the people. However, we found out that Malaysians prefer to ride their private cars compared to public transport. To conduct the study, a survey and sampling method are used to collect data which will be used in the research. And it is expected that Malaysia will have a better transport system in the future. Currently, the, the number of people residing on Earth has been reached 7.9 billion and expected to keep rising with a stable growth. Uh, therefore, it is our responsibility to, to take care of the Earth. We have identified some problems of the topic such as pollution towards the environment to a degree where it, where it will be dangerous for us to sit outside if no safety precaution is taken. Next, uh, problems such as excessive jams and high death rate caused from road accidents. The importance of this topic is to protect the nature from further destruction such as problems like cleaning of the ozone layer and haze problem. It is also to improve the service of public transportation and to produce healthy individual in Malaysia as public transport does not support door-to-door -door transportation. So the, those who ride transport, public transportation have to walk a lot more than those who ride their private car. The objective is to promote the objective of this study is to promote people in using public transport so that we can all benefit from it and also to create a safe and conducive city. Now, Sister Hayani will continue for literature duty. Thank you, Akmal. My name is Hayani, and I will be presenting the literature review for this project. First of all, as the topic is to cultivate the use of public transport to strive to sustainable city, we must understand what sustainable city is. The concept is complex and has no singular definition. In fact, the concept changes according to the ideals of the special settings. However, the core and general concept of a sustainable city is the city's ability to sustain its environment, social, and economic for future generations. One of the key characteristics of a sustainable city is sustainable transport. Sustainable transport is a system where the use of transportation does not cause great harm to the environment, is affordable, and is accessible to everyone in the long run. Sustainable transport includes public transportation. In Malaysia, although there are many options of public transport, like the LRT, MRT, and the bus, the utilization of it still remains below target. This is due to many reasons, such as the subpar commuting experience, like unpunctuality and lack of holistic travel demand management, as well as the low cost of car ownership. This is a concern for the government because it was revealed that the carbon emission of the transport sector contributed up to 48,200 kilotons of CO2, and around 67% of that is the carbon emission from cars, which jeopardizes the goal of becoming a sustainable country. As you can see, private transportation is the reason for more than half of the carbon emission. Not only that, the increase of car ownership also causes traffic congestion. The use of public transport, although it doesn't completely eliminate the carbon emission, should be able to help reduce the overall greenhouse gas emissions. It will also be able to reduce the number of cars on the road by utilizing mass transits and railway transportations. With the purpose of promoting the use of public transport, the government has introduced a new national policy called the 12th Malaysia Plan. The goal of the plan is to make Malaysia a carbon-neutral country by 2050. In order to achieve this, 
The plan outlines a couple of strategies that will be implemented. One strategy is by increasing the frequency of feeder buses and the realignment of routes. This is in order to reduce the waiting time and travel time that citizens often use as the reasons for preferring private transport. The next strategy is the integration of e-hailing services with mass rapid transit and light rail transit network. The government will also enhance pedestrian lanes in urban areas to encourage active mobility. And last but not least, the government will limit the parking spots and increase higher parking fees in urban areas with high public transportation accessibility. This is to discourage the masses from using private transport and instead use the cheaper option and the more environmental friendly option, which is using public transport. Due to limited time, this is all I will be presenting from my part and I will pass the stage to Hawa. Okay, uh, my name is Fatih Nurhawa and I will um, explain about our methodology for our proposal. Okay, um, the method that we use uh, will be a quantitative um, which relate to uh, the re relational study aimed at examin examining different levels of education with the use of public transportation. Um, the survey, um, the method quantitative that we use is survey and it will be a close ended question as it um uh, as it already being structured and easy to analyze and reliable um the platform that we use to collect the data uh, will be a google form since um google form is the platform that all people use and also it's very well known and easy to um easy to use to analyze on um, data uh, on the other hand the our questionnaire also will be um more general as we only focuses on the awareness of the society towards the public transportation that malaysia provide and on the other hand, uh, we also will provide Likert scale questionnaire. Likert scale, scale questionnaire is a rate scales that indicates the level of agree or disagreement towards something and also um, a thought about a particular topic whether it is towards more towards negative or positive. And why we use Likert scale questionnaire is because we want to know the satisfaction rate of um, our societies towards Malaysia, uh, Malaysia's public transportation. Since we want to know whether the public transportation provided is um, more to negative impact or give a positive impact towards our societies and last but not least we also will use sampling technique um, sampling technique is a, col a method to collect data that um, involve society uh, a large scales um, for example, a community from the results of a subset of the population without having to look into every single person, which means uh, since we want to um, since we want to okay, since we want to do a research um, in more generalized way uh, and not in specific um, person, so our sampling technique is the most suitable um, method as uh, since it's uh, only involve a population instead of a single person so a uh, sample technique that we will use is quota sampling because um, the data that will be collected um, is by randomly selecting a people and grouping them by um, their level educations, which is from um, middle school, high school, university level, and uh, working people. 
So um, that's all for our methodology. However, um, there uh, because the poll mainly focuses on subjects based on different levels of education, which is um high school level, university level, and working uh working workers. Um, the research may be uneven between normal people and disabled people. So that's all for me. I would like to pass the slides to the next presenter. Thank you. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. I will be presenting about our expected results and benefits from our project. First and foremost, the most important expected outcome is that the quality of public transport has improved. Improved bus frequency is one area where the government could improve and public riders should be assured that their bus will arrive soon, especially during rush hours. Uh, next, we are also anticipating the responsible party taking action to resolve issues relating to our project. Environmental impact is one of the most serious issues now. For example, using diesel buses contributes significantly to climate change. The party in charge should take action by proposing a solution, such as using zero emission buses for our example. And, and lastly, our findings may increase the number of people who use public transportation and other public facilities, reducing traffic congestion. The public would be more willing to use public facilities if there were more investment, encouragement, and quality of life improvements. Last but not least, I would like to explain about the implications of our research. First and foremost, if the research is completed and the outcomes are as expected, we will notice a cleaner atmosphere, particularly in terms of our air quality index. This is because if the majority of the population uses public transportation, we will observe a reduction in traffic. Next, if public transportation becomes more appealing, more business will be eager to invest in it which will help the government greatly. This can be seen in Denmark, where a lot of corporations are investing in public transportation because the majority of the inhibit inhabitants use a lot of public services. And finally, the government could develop a sensible policy that prioritizes public facilities. Buses, for example, should be given priority for green light at traffic lights over private automobiles. This would make a significant contribution to SDG 13, which is to tackle climate change by reducing the number of cars emitting CO2. Uh, that's all for me. I will pass on to the last presenter. Thank you. So, for the last part, conclusion. In conclusion, it is the responsibility of the government to provide public transport that is safe and comfortable to help people. Furthermore, support the creation and of legislation that, that is in the reduction of harmful emission and the identification of alternatives that will assure transportation's long-term viability and public use. It is expected that people will be able to have a better experience in traveling with private and public transport as the issues have been addressed where future transport system will become more systematic and safer for all. That's all from me. Thank you.